Welcome back, brothers, to a uh, second show here on the O'Shea Duke Jackson channel. You know I have three lined up today, and this is my second one that I am doing for the brotherhood. Uh, guys, I want to first of all thank you for the show that we did a little bit earlier uh, with the brother George Macon. Uh, but today, man, we have to talk about something that's going on in the black or pro-black online community uh, as far as Africa is concerned and issues concerning African-Americans. And I have an expert on the topic today, my brother out here, who is currently living in Atlanta, Bomani Tahemba. He's no stranger to this channel. He's doing uh, some great work with uh, repatriation to the continent and, and offering tours to those of us uh, in, in Black America and in other parts of the United States. Now uh, that's Bomani Tahemba in the in the and today we're going to talk about pro-black community keyboard warriors. And I want to welcome him to the show. Welcome, brother Bomani. How are you doing today? Uh, greetings, brother O'Shea. Always good uh, connecting with you. I appreciate your energy, man. I love that fire inside you, man. And uh, definitely congratulations on your tour throughout the African continent. Uh, the three countries you have traveled to, which is three more than all of these, uh, a lot of these fake, uh, fake, you know, there's so many names you can add to it. <laughs> talking about uh, Africa and never been there. And you just, you know, you put your money to, you know, where your mouth is and, you know, you did your work and you're putting energy in now. We just need to just shut down the haters and let that motivate them to buy a plane ticket, get on the road, you know, start traveling to Africa, do their research. And put it in that work because a lot of work that needs to be done on the continent if you're interested in doing things in Africa, which is much better than you know running them out and talking on YouTube. Oh yeah, and see, the, uh, Dr. Mumbi is in the chat, so I think Dr. Mumbi was so fired up from the show I did yesterday. She's coming to see some niggas get cussed out. So Dr. Mumbi, we might not because we can both turn this motherfucker up, me and Beaumont. Okay, because we we, <laughs> we gonna be cool because we both can get we, let these niggas know. But we might be cool today. We're going to be here because we're going to try to keep it educational. But at any given motherfucking moment, me and him can set this motherfucker off. Ain't that right, brother? We'll t let these niggas know, won't we? Absolutely. Um, and uh, and you know, the next year, they're going to be like, man, those two angry black men. That's yeah. what they're going to be We're going we gonna to keep our white voice on today because we're going we gonna to let some, we might let you niggas know how we really fucking feel about y'all, but we're going to be cool. Uh, brother Bomani, tell everybody, you know, basically, um, cause you have a, so you tell everybody about the, your company that you have and we're going to, we're going to start talking in, talking about these motherfucking niggas in a minute, but just let everybody know, uh, what services you offer, what got you interested in going to the continent and all of that kind of, kind of break it down. What, why you're so interested in the re, uh, repatriation to the continent and things you've been doing there. Well, perfect. Um, um, in 2003, um, I joined the conscious energy, which is what people call the conscious community. Um, which uh, I started studying a lot of books, uh, doing uh, study groups, and you know, that's connecting with brothers. I was you know, very new to here to the Atlanta area. I'd been here only about two years uh, from 2001, and this, this was 2003. So once I started studying all these books about Africa, and it was just exciting and everything. Then you know, you you have you, you have people start saying, "You guys, all you guys just talk about Africa, talk about Africa, and never go." And I started looking at my peers, and I was like, "You know what? They're right. They got they got a good beef with you guys. You guys been talking a lot about Africa." And talking down and I told him you know what? let's make this move let's start going to Africa and let's build an energy to do things in Africa and be more practical because people are going to say all oh, you guys talk about Africa about nation building then you don't go nowhere you don't build nothing and you know myself just being someone that's fresh out the military aircraft technician this only thing I knew at that time was how to fix planes and you know at that time I was working for the airlines so in 2004 I went on my first journey which was to uh, Egypt because I was studying uh, you know the energy of the, the, the books on ancient uh, Egypt. Um, and that's also popular in the, in the conscious community, this uh, Egypt and its circle. So uh, I went there, went to Egypt. It was a beautiful journey. Um, was, you know, got educated about a lot of things. Uh, that's actually a second journey. But in, um, in March, I actually 2004, I actually went to Senegal. And that's, I went there based on wanting to know why I'm to my ancestors during the transatlantic European slave trade. Okay. Because when you're reading these books, you started you know, looking at relevant countries to go to. And, you know, so that built that energy that year alone, just going and, you know, kind of just getting back in the books and studying at a lot of uh, conscious uh, DVDs. And that was like, you know, my beginning year, but about to be one of the practical people in the conscious community energy. Even when I joined different organization, it was always about, you know, you know, people talking about us. You know, let's, let's, you know, let's try to do something and build something and contribute. With the rest of you know the black community to make a difference and i always say to people that 
it's you know, it's up to all of us to educate each other about you know the things we need. So I appreciate the conscious energy of this that initiation. So from there, I haven't stopped traveling to the African continent in 2005. Went to Senegal, South Africa, and Kenya, and in 2006, uh, went to you know. The, one of my favorite tropical African countries, uh, the Gambia, that was country number five. And then Ghana was December of 2006, and that was country number six. And I literally found a home and found somewhere where I feel like it's connected to me from being someone that's born in the African diaspora in Jamaica and living in America. And it was just so relevant to where I wanted to expand on the business that we started uh, two months ago, which was October 2006, which was called Africa for the Africans Tours. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. I took my first uh, organized group. It was myself, seven other people. It was a total eight of us went to Ghana. And that just expanded from there. When I came back, I was just full of energy. And I just started putting the work and putting it together. And in October of 2007, it was 42 of us. I had a big group. And then that was it from there. Um, you know, I made a name for myself. And just really just started just connecting our people to the continent and helping people move over, even though I didn't know much about living and doing business in Africa. I developed a lot of relationships in 2006 and 2007 to where you know I could actually help people get things set up like you know get access to land you know get connected to some good people and then a lot of those people I met initially is people that stood the test of time that, that they're still doing business with me one or two people you know I had to ax you know you know how that goes uh, you got to replace the weak and that way you have a strong crew mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. where we are right now we're um 12 years into going to Ghana, and I've been to other countries also, including Ethiopia, Togo, Benin, and looking forward to going back to South Africa next year in November. And this got a nice energy of tours on our website, Africa for the Africans.org. And this is an incredible journey so far, and we're just ready to connect people and really link people with what's really going on in Africa and let people know it's not about talking and playing on your keyboards and, you know, and attacking each other in the black community. It's about literally practically going out there and building things. But I always do feel like we have to call out the imposters because a lot of imposters make the rest of us in the black community look bad. Yeah, I, I'm gonna give you niggas that work today. You imposter motherfuckers, don't you worry about nothing. I got some for you, but not right now. Um, let me let me talk about this before we get into the imposter people. Um, 2007, you started doing business in Africa and you had, said you had to get adjusted to it. What are some of the initial challenges living in the West, in America, um, and doing business, and then doing business in Africa, primarily in Ghana. What are some of the challenges you have to face? Yeah, one of the biggest challenges is definitely going to be, um, you know, communication. Um, you know, as far as just the the clarity of the network at that point. Point, uh, I don't think internet was even that good. But uh, you know, you, you know, you still was you know doing your business. You just have to, you know, if you're doing certain things with a few, with a few small group of people, it's simple and easy. Uh, you just build a communication to where you either communicating via email and just uh, phone calls and certain things. But then you also got to think about the time zone, um, which is about four to five hours uh, when you're dealing with Ghana. And you know, and a quick uh, thing, if you're dealing with countries, um, some countries you're dealing with, you have to deal with just hardcore language barrier. Ghana is not that uh, bad. Uh, the English is similar between the English we speak in the Caribbean, America, and uh, Ghana. So we as a people can understand each other. Uh, so those are initially the, the issue and then now you're thinking about uh doing tours so now you have to find ways to send money so now you have to do wire transfers or find ways to just build your energy into the send money to western union and certain things because you can never really send a whole bunch of money at one point when you send a transaction uh to the african continent you just get flagged because it seemed like there's a control of, of of discouraging people to send lots of money or sending money certain certain ways because you always hear about people getting their transaction blocked um and western union telling them well, there's a volatile situation in that country. We don't want you to give your money to terrorists. You know, it's a, that's a lot of crazy stuff. So those things kind of throw you off. So what I've learned at that point is like to, to learn to build a good communication with the people I need on how we're doing, things we're doing. That way we can be effective. Because when people just try to do certain things, they just go to the country and try to do certain things. They seem to be frustrated um, based on things that are not as fast as you know, the economy they came from. And that's another thing too. So you have to get used to the culture of how things are being done in the country. And the people that you're doing things with, you have to build a certain relationship to make sure that things are clear. And a lot of times you say certain things and people be like, yes, yes, yes. And you have to make sure that they're just not saying yes, yes, yes. So just you know, so simple little you know, cultural um, you know, issues do, but the more you build that relationship and get to know each other, because then now you know more about uh, your own brother and sister from African continent, they know the same about you. 
and that kind of dispel whatever myth and then now you can just really have a nice solid relationship so those are the way I, ways i've been able to build energy and things have been successful for me i mean it's been incredible 12 years of uh, hardcore um business there in ghana taking over 350 people there uh, on and some of the journey has been bus loads i mean 30 or 40 people and having to manage that that's one of the things that sometimes people probably overlook and not see that this is a business enterprise you're managing 30 or 40 people people are paying you know three to four thousand dollars for tours tickets have to be arranged uh, money have to be transferred uh, certain things have to be set up to where you're doing business with people who are not going to run off of their money because then now you're liable to, you know for the people who you know you accepted money for you promised them certain things so just you know you can't just get up to any you know country and say i'm going to do this and then start you know like nigeria like i've never been able to do you know get anything going as far as any connections in nigeria to where i felt comfortable on moving forward so i've just really just never done tours and there or many other country uh, ghana is more from a connection of you know where i've been able to build a brotherhood okay and i think a lot of african americans uh feel like that again shout out to dr mumi she was in here full circle good to see you um let me also talk about about this um you know when i was in kenya i noticed that you know obviously in africa i'm used to using paypal so i found myself using shout out to m pesa for those people who are in kenya and like tanzania to send money and things like that um, you have to actually get registered. I had to send some money um, to like my driver, let's say for example, or certain people even to stay um, at my place. I booked an Airbnb, but then I wanted to stay extra days. Um, so she was like, well, I'll come get the money. And I was like, well, I can send it to you MTN. So I, I started noticing sending money mobile to mobile was some of the things that I noticed that you do a lot in Africa, but they don't do a lot in the United States. So I found out it'd be interesting where you can get like money in a text message and shit like that. So, um, but let's talk about, you know, before we get into the pro black keyboard community, building relationships um, with people that can help you. How hard is it to meet the right people in Africa to help you do things uh, versus meeting the right people in the United States that can kind of change your life? Well, um, yeah, great question. Um, my, my, the, the main technique I use with, with dealing with our people on African content, the connection I've always started with, with is the connection from people who have repatriated to the African continent. Uh, people have moved from here and have lived in, in Ghana. So that energy is how I really got in. So that I started building relationships with the people who are, are on the ground. So I thought that was a better, you know, better way because these the people I was dealing with are people that I knew from here in America that were just you know, prominent business people or people that was deep into Pan-Africanism. Uh, so once I figure out that, you know, all I just need to have is just a key, few key people, you know, you have two, you have a few hotels, you um, you get to know the managers and you get to know the owners and the same thing uh, with the transportation company. Okay. Um, let me, let me kind of get into some of the, some of the, 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 the negative bullshit. Cause I know what, what y'all are in here for y'all, y'all ready for that work. So let's, let's talk about these niggas real quick. Uh, uh, brothers, I'm sorry, brothers. <laughs> All right, now, um, you are trying to do the work. You know, you're a person that, you know, you're in the military, you, you, you're going to Africa, you're spending your money, you're trying to establish things, you, you dedicated your life to, to doing this. Um, you have people like Dr. Mundi, who's in the chat, she's dedicated her life to trying to, you know, bring awareness and collaborate. People like Search for Uhuru, who is how I found you. Absolutely, um, big, up to, big up to Dinah Samir, because you, you his connection with you have you know really just taken off a whole new mean. I mean, I never thought I'll see you in Africa just with this amount of energy. And that's from yeah. his, uh, his uh, connection. That, that that's 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 true because before Dinah Samir, uh, you know, I haven't I wasn't really saying in John Powell video, I gotta give him credit. I was studying like post-colonial um, you know, African politics. So I knew about the Thomas cars, I knew about the Milton of Boltes and the Jokoma Kenyatta's. But I wasn't necessarily e e eager to go, but it was through Dynasty Mir, uh, people like John Powell video, um, that got me to get my you know yellow paper card, got me going and wanting to make a relationship with Africa. Uh, but let's talk about some of the people who want to be um, pro-black community keyboard warriors and stay in the States. And they say they love Africa, but they never really want to get their lazy black asses off their ass and try to actually make a relationship or practice what they preach. I'm talking about only those people. I'm not talking about African-Americans or blacks who don't want anything to do with Africa. Their minds are made up. We know that. But I'm talking about those who are the pretenders, your pro-black pretenders. Imposters, the fraud. 
<laughs> let, let, let's talk about that because this this needs to be talked about. What what do you think these imposter people? Why are they not pulling the trigger to actually want to establish a relationship in Africa or do things in Africa? In your opinion? Oh wow, well, I got a, a few different opinions. Uh, one of them is uh, it's you know, it's easier to, to talk and uh, you know, stay in a state and be there all your life and just talk good and then the cycle analyze everybody else that's doing everything, which just seemed like that's what the comments about in the in your, your, your chat room and the comment section when you know, people are talking about you and your travels, um, and just a sense of just jealousy, you know, the fact that some of us are smart to organize our money and cut back on spending money here and, and realize that you know what I want to. You know, I want to invest in, you know, in, in myself and part of that investment. I want to know more about my roots and culture and put that money together. And, you know, you have some people just it's it's just more glorified or America is more just glorified just to talk and fantasize. And, you know, my point is always like, all right, um, you, know, you know, they don't really have a point, but it's like it, it, I guess it's just so much fun just watching other people and just being jealous of what they're doing. Um, other reasons is, is you know, it's, it's just a lot of the silly, ignorant uh, reasons. It's not really, it's just not really, not really, not really uh, just organizing how people just look at, look at some people that are doing certain things and say, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to um, undermine what they're doing because, oh, you know, it's then they're like, oh, well, you know, I can just go to Africa. I can buy a ticket. Well, if you can buy a ticket and go to Africa, you, you should. Uh, but I think people realize w w once they start planning, like what country am I going to go to? What's going to happen to if I go here? It's a lot of different concerns. And that's why people like myself just have organized tour groups. I even encourage those imposters to get together with the rest of their imposters. And, <laughs> uh, and you guys can just come together, put your money together, buy some tickets, mm -hmm. make reservations on you know, a few days in the main city, then go out to another few of the other uh, cities and work out transportation. I mean, it's a simple thing. It's simple logistics. To do uh, so in this modern day age where we have all this technology, uh, but as simple as that is, some people don't do it. So the, those of us that are into it and doing it deserve much love and much respect. And the little that we're getting done in Africa deserves also that because once you decide to come to the African continent and then say, oh, "I'm going to do this, I'm going to build a nation, I'm going to do all this, I'm going to work with governments to to, to 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 make all these things work for African Americans, and we're going to build a city for ourselves," and all these things, all those things that sound nice and everything. And you know you can just you know you can get together with each other and talk in your chat room and it sounds exciting. But then I tell people I've been out here, you know, at an early age from since I was 20, traveling the international world. I've been to six continents, over 33 countries, and it changes your life. But at the same time, too, it's a commitment you have to make. And once you make that commitment, all it is is about just doing it because there's so much work to be done. Let's talk about that in a positive light because I was on Dr. Moody's show. Um, and we were talking about how, you know, um, you know, when you come to Africa, one of the things I noticed, and this was a complaint from some of the Ghanaian community, because we do have a, the largest expat, for whatever reason, African Americans are attracted to Ghana. Um, I don't know if that's because a lot of us come from there or that region, but a lot of African Americans are more attracted to Ghana than even Nigeria or Togo. Um, but one of the things that I see from some of the Ghanaians or I heard that African Americans, they come in, um, actually have a little bit more money, they have a little bit more skill, um, and then they're trying to impose their will on the local community, trying to change things and change things that fit them. Let's talk about that because a lot of the imposter communities, um, even if they do decide that they want to go and do things, they think that they're going to be, you know, they're entitled when they go to Africa that because, you know, they're coming back to their homeland that automatically I'm one of them, I'm one of you, so I get to have all the rights that you have. Let's talk about that. Have you have you felt that sort of entitlement from African Americans on your tours and things like that? Oh yes, you do have a few people like that. Um and I used to do my best to educate them that it's um it's it's not as simple as it's you're dealing with a country where you know where where seventy five percent of people uh, or a number maybe more or less are unemployed. So the uh, the government in the country can't just like focus on you even though you're part of the you know the, the growth and the change but they're more focused on you trying to contribute and not necessarily trying to trying to say this is how we do it and you know and all those things because you know if those of us who were born in america and have access to certain things if we're there and if we we're born in ghana you know you know we'd see life a little different but since we're born with you know we wake up and 
for the most part, um, everything is based on the you know, communities, whether it's counties or states and cities, and it's organized where you have you have you know you have certain certain things that's taken care of. But uh, you can go to somewhere like you know, Ghana, and it's just not that simple. And then you feel like, well, you know, well, if 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 if, if, if they do things like how I want them done do, doing things, then they'll be successful and the country will be rich and all these things. And it's just not that simple. Cause colonization has just taken on a whole different world, just like us uh, being enslaved uh, or stolen Africans have taken on a different way of how we look at things. And, you know, yes, yeah, so we're going to have certain differences, but we don't want another situation like Sierra Leone and Liberia. I mean, and that's why, you know, uh, we just really have to get rid of that entitlement because then it just, it, it just creates just that, that, that another aspect of civil war, which we don't want because when we go to a country like Ghana, everything is based on ethnic group. And like Dr. Mumbi said to you that, you know, we're, we're basically like the African diaspora ethnic group. And I've been told that in Ghana also. So you know, those, so that's why you have the African-American Association and the Caribbean Association of Ghana, which you know, I respect both of those organizations. I feel like more of us should go there and join it and be a good representation to be that bridge between other people are coming and be the bridge to connect, be more with our own people. Uh, there in Ghana and not own people, but be with our brothers and sisters on the continent there in Ghana. Um, and, and a lot of these things are not as simple. Uh, um, you know, we do have a few diaspora communities and I'm looking to invest in one, another one, just so the fact that we can get more people come over and just be more in one to working together as a people and doing the things that we need to do together. Um, you know, it's hard to build nations and build a bunch of other things without even understanding the true meaning of how you build communities and how you organize yourself and how we can, how we live together, respect each other, and how we pull our resources together to where we are paving a future for our children. If we say we want a certain type of schools and hospital, now we can reach out and connect as the people in the different communities and build these things. And so for me, that, those are things that we more should be focusing on when we connect to the African continent instead of looking at how I can just be superior over over you know my own brother and sister since I've been you know since some people they they just been under the white they've been under their white boss foot all their life you know 30 40 years at their job and now they finally get to go somewhere and they feel like they can be in charge of black people so those are things we just have to really just educate people be careful of that because number one it makes the rest of us look bad and number two it's not how we're gonna build you know that strong African diaspora and African continent energy that really needs to be fortified let me let me tell you. Wait, wait. Echo on you. Let me let me mute myself. Okay, hello? Okay. Yeah, man. Fuck it. Let me let me talk about this. A lot of these, you know, blacks in, in some of these pro-black community keyboard wars, let's say if they do, because most of most of these niggas ain't going nowhere. Let's just be honest. And if you are here and you're a pro-black community keyboard warrior, you ain't gonna do shit. You ain't going nowhere. You probably gonna sit somewhere on a laptop and steal somebody else's Wi-Fi. And, and, and throw and put up uh, one of them red, black, and green uh, uh, pictures of Malcolm X with the gun up or some shit like that, and sit there and talk shit about me and Bomani all motherfucking day. When we be going over to other African countries with your sorry ass. But anyways, let me let me stop with that. Let's say one of these black ass Negroes um, decide to um, take a trip. Do you feel that African Americans, when they come to Ghana, even though they talk about, oh, the white man is oppressing our people, we need to rebuild Africa, do you think that African Americans, when they come to Africa, that they feel that they are better than the, than the group that's there and they feel that they, are, they should be more privileged than them and that the, the local people are below them? That's a tough one. I think some people uh, do take that stance, um, but usually, you know, uh, tend to push a group of energy more, a little more pro-organized than that. Uh, so um, just going through the process of things, um, you know, I mean, I'm, no matter what I do, I can't stop people from thinking a certain way um, as far as if they, they feel that way. But I, I truly believe uh, the program of how we connect people, it kind of helps them understand, you know, that, that understand that that's just a, a, a ill way to come in um, because, you know, it's just, it's just how we have always been divided as a people, you know, we be, you know, and now we're doing our own division, creating our own division by looking down on our own. Uh, so I represent the energy of uh, uh, pro-conscious people who are really about certain things and really about trying to build in Africa and doing certain things. That's what the tour attracts. Uh, a lot of the imposters, uh, they'll just go there and then they'll try to do certain things and then they'll come back 
and come back screaming because they realized things didn't work out for them. But then again, they didn't take necessary protocol or, or, or connected themselves with their own brothers and sisters that are, that's been doing things in Ghana. Like a lot of people I deal with been there for 20, 30 years and they've been through certain things. So they're there to help us understand the best way to, you know, kind of move into Ghana and kind of build that energy. And they also <clears throat> let you know that you're going to run into certain things. Some of the issues you're going to run into is that some people it's going to meet you, you know, you're going to be directly tied to you know, their salary. That's how they're going to be making some of their money, you know? So, um, you know, it's easy to look down on someone like that, like, you know, but at the same time too, um, you know, we have to really put ourselves in that same situation say, how was it if I grew up there in Ghana where, you know, I couldn't get employment like that in America, if you halfway decent, you may be able to get a job. You know, if you know, if you have some credentials or if you can, or, you know, you can do some hustles because America is a system built for those. So if you can use your brains and create business and do certain things, you can make a living, you know, mm -hmm. Ghana kind of limit on that. So, uh, you know, I, I explain those things to people. And you know, explain to them why you know people like myself feel like we don't need to take more of a humble approach, and that would also be a key to saving our life. So let me let me kind of talk to you about this because um, there's a brother that I've been checking out uh, in Ghana right now. His name is Native Born. Have you heard of this guy? And yes, uh, Born, uh, him and his wife came to our repatriation investment conference uh, October of 2013, uh, literally uh, five years ago. And uh, I want to say that, I want to say they only had like one or maybe two children. At that point, and I remember them saying that they're not going to go back. I mean, I just respect their will to say we're going to leave, we're going to build our family and have even more children. And I just say I literally go back and look at that interview because from once they went there, they just you know really just made a name for themselves. And I've been providing us and African dads for a lot of important information on how we can move there with children and family and things like things you wouldn't know unless you just had a family. So uh, these African Americans, um, again, it seems like their YouTube channel has just kind of blew up, man. Like I remember when I first started watching them, um, they had maybe like 700 subscribers and now they're up to, I don't know what they're up to right now, but they're doing really well. I know Phil from that Vibe show, um, you know, he featured them. Woody Maya just had an interview with them. Now they're up to almost 14,000 subscribers in <clears throat> what ended up happening, 14,000 subscribers. Um, they actually were gonna, were gonna leave Ghana and they asked for some financial support from, from, their, from the fan base and they actually got enough money to, to stay there, which I thought was awesome. Um, but let me, let me ask you this, for people like, like this, because they said they've left before and they came back. What are some of the reasons that people, when they wanna repatriate to Ghana, and you said that some of them, they, you know, they, have, they, they end up leaving and can't stay, um, I know there's a brother that uh, searched for a Hulu um, interviews who was in, in a Mombasa named uh, Amin, Amin Ra. But why do you think a lot of the brothers who want to go to Ghana are sisters and want to stay there, and for whatever reason, they have to come back um, and, and they, they can't stay in Africa? What are some of the challenges that you think that allows them not to stay there? Yeah, number one thing, um, you know, if you're going to move to Africa, you got to have a business enterprise that's going to uh, create money, preferably a business enterprise that you can do there. And then you can uh, make, you know, you can make basically U.S. or European dollars there in Ghana. Like if I had my tour business or my IT business, maybe relocated in Ghana and set up, that's how literally I'll be getting paid for my, you know, IT and U.S. clientele, which is a lot of money there in Ghana. And not everyone has those game plan organized to where they're gonna have a business work. Some people believe that they're gonna take fifty thousand dollars, they're gonna start a business there and make money. But what they're not looking at is that you're gonna be making CDs and the. Uh, CDs um, for 100 US dollars, you get 450 CDs. So the money is just like almost like four and a half to one. So you know, so if you if you're not making US dollars there and you're there in a the country and you're you know you're kind of live trying to live your American life, you're eventually you're gonna run out of money and things are gonna shut down for you. So most of the people, all the people I know that successfully doing well for themselves there in the country is mainly the people who have retired. You know, retired from the military and they're using their resources retired from their government jobs or people have sold things like their homes, their cars and put their money together in investments accounts and have made it work for themselves. So it's a, it's a situation where we have to use the American system that we're in for those of us that live here and build business, build a way that you can, you know, you can have income different, you know, this, you know some of us have to be more creative. And the good thing about it, you know, at this booming up the internet age is a lot of different ways you can work your money. But then also when you're making a little money from saying, <clears> you have to invest your money because Things change. Uh, so all those things are things that a lot of times we don't think about and we rush to leave. 
I've been wanting to move to Ghana forever. Uh, you know, but the first time I wanted to move there, I realized that I didn't even have enough technical or business skills and nothing. And I need to really develop my skills and develop certain things to make myself even marketable to where I can really just run my own enterprise there and be successful because you're not in a situation where you can just go look for a job or it's not a welfare state where government is going to provide you housing or, or food stamp. At least in America, if you ain't got nothing, you can go back for some food stamp. Right. There, you know, you know, you're on your own. Uh, that's why a lot of people in African continent stick together as family and do things more communally because of the <coughs> lack of uh, resources and budget. Because any at any given African or Caribbean country, your debt and your life is dedicated to America. And you have, you have to ship out most of your resources to them yeah, because they have a foothold on your neck. So it just makes it real tight. So if we're coming there. We really got to have a good game plan. And for those of us who feel like we're just going to get rid of our American passport and live happily ever after in, in Ghana, don't set yourself up because things can go bad to where now you're coming now and so you talking bad about the white man in America. Now you just you're begging them back for a job, begging. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people like you know, my own brothers that are supposed to be pro, 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 pro all these things because there's so many things that we call out. Everybody call themselves. And then next, you know, they at the American embassy, the people they used to call the enemy. <laughs> And the, and then uh, the American embassy is going to help you get a ticket to go back to America and probably help you get a shelter, a housing, and things like that, uh, because they, they don't want because they realize the country you, you know you can't be in the country. Your purpose of being in the country is to boost the economy by creating economic opportunity. The government wants you to create jobs. You know even if you just have a you, you build a home, they want you to hire a maid, they want you to hire a driver, a gardener, things like that, even on a base level. Uh, I see, I see. So let me, you know, talk about um, some of these people, right, that are stuck in this kind of pro-black community keyboard warrior thing. You know, they're talking about white supremacy. Um, they're talking about all type of shit, um, you know, on, online. But again, and, and Dynex makes this 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 point. You see a lot of these brothers and sisters going to London. They'll go visit China, Negro Republic. <laughs> Republic. Some of you, and you know how you niggas. Let me let me stop the show. Some of you niggas, I damn sure will see you in Brazil because I was in Brazil and I seen some of you niggas there, and I didn't even tell nobody I was in Brazil, and y'all niggas was in Brazil. But you know, we'll see these. You see these brothers and sisters every motherfucking where, except for in motherfucking Africa. You know what I mean? Oh, my pastor, simple to P is in here. I called you earlier today, pastor. Uh, so. You know, I will see you niggas everywhere. Motherfucking in, in Brazil. Um, you Them niggas going to the Dominican Republic. They everywhere except for Africa. But these are the niggas with the Marcus Garvey posters. They got they got Thomas Sankar all in the background. Um, these niggas is following Julius Malema and the EFF. You know, yeah, they'll, be, they'll be in there. All over the logo. All over the... the, the oh. This one nigga, hold on, I'm gonna cut you off. There, uh, Dr. Movie is here. Dr. Movie, there is a nigga on your uh, channel that's what uh, this nigga has a profile picture of of him playing the horn. Now I know the nigga can't play because the, the nigga like he ain't got no talent, but he just like Louis Armstrong. His cheeks is out here, and you know he. This is the type of nigga that has never been to motherfucking Africa, never even been to Africa motherfucking street. This nigga watched the Roots one time. And felt like he was African because he heard the name Kuta Kente. Why are these fake ass niggas, in your opinion? You find them everywhere. You find them all in New York, Vegas. Why don't they go to Africa? But they talk so much shit and waste so much time commenting all motherfucking day on videos. Yeah, I think they, in general, definitely scared. You know, they, they, they think they think they're gonna go in and, and something's gonna happen to them. Um, but yeah, it, 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 beyond that, it kind of just beats me. I mean, because, you know, that, and that's why we have to call out imposters and people just running their mouth, you know, talking about they're going to do this in Africa and do this. It's like, yo, first, how about you get your passport and go to go to JFK Airport, get enough flight and go directly to, you know, like Ghana or somewhere in the African continent. As a matter of fact, um, you know, since you like going to Europe, you know, your flight is going to go to Europe, either Amsterdam or Paris, and then you have a whole bunch of flights from there all over the African continent. Yeah, so you can. I'm even making it easier for some of them. You can spend some time in France or Amsterdam, and then go you know, <clears throat> to the continent. Let's talk about the shot that you received the diary and I. Um, we went to the Elephant Park. Doctor Moon is is there. 
it, it was it was crazy because you know there's an elephant orphanage in Nairobi. I'm pretty sure you maybe seen it before. They bring out these elephants, you kind of adopt them, whatever, you pay some money. And when I got there, the it was like I never seen so many white people with like African shit on. And, <laughs> You know, I mean, it was it was the whole thing, and the white people were actually collecting money at the door, like as we were going in, and then and you have to pay. If white people, that's like in Kenya, this is in Kenya now, white women with, with flip flops and sandals on, like nigga, pay me to get in here, and you're like, <laughs> like bitch, what are you doing here? You know what I mean? And and I see all the time, and I, I mean, I'm not to say this, but oh yeah, the David Sheldrick orphanage. Thank you, Doctor Moon. Um. Even on the plains, man, I'm seeing the Chinese all the time in Africa. Um, you see whites from other places. Every, almost every plane I've been to going to Africa, I, I hardly, I only seen the African American in Africa one time. That's when I was in Johannesburg. Or I was in Santon, and I heard some brothers talking in English, and I knew they were from the, you know, the states. I spoke, spoke to them. But, but, but why don't you think? I mean, this, the scary part. Let's talk about that. What are African Americans afraid of? Yeah, and that's the thing of it is, and that's why people like myself make it easy for you to go to a country and be safe, you know, have security, have people, you know, who are going to look out for their best interest in case they're just very paranoid that, um, you know, now, and, that, and that's why this crazy myth about Africans don't like and African-Americans just got to stop because then some of these fake pro people, you know, start taking it to heart and it scares the life out of them, you know, so I'm telling them, I was like, yo, you know, the, the continent is safe. And I was like, you know, if you, you know, if you really believe in all the Africa you talk about and have all of our ancestors all over your house and everything, uh, you know, you know, be about it. it. It's a simple situation. Even when people come and tell them, you know, I can help you just have a basic game plan. You can spend a week in Africa, build your, build your experience, build your energy. And, but if, you know, if you ain't about it, just, you know, shut your YouTube channel down, roll back into the alley and just, you know, don't let nobody know you have all those things in your house. And, you know, and like you said, we, we don't have a beef with the folks who say they, they, they just not go to Africa and they just not interested. You know, that's fine. But we're just talking about the imposters. And that's where we just get all confused because sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to really just see where they're rational. I think they just was purposely, like, you know, like when we talk about like the conscious community of pro black uh, or any of these communities, we just always have that bad energy. And it's always trying to pull that other, you know, positive energy. And, it's, and that's why, you know, we have so much. You know, you see so much you know beef in just you know, you know the black community in general, and I always believe that you know we we might have to just break out. And I don't have any raid or anything on me here today. I just I pick I pick these up from from you know from in a closet, and you know we might have to just like you know, exterminate these fools, you know, because what they do initially is the progress of black people in general would have been moved so much forward without these you know folks this 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 consistently just bringing down the energy. So you know we need to just spray them. Zzz, let me ask you about this. There is that energy that we feel Africans do not like African Americans. Obviously, I mean, you're in the States, you kind of know how that works, even though you're, you know, um, a Caribbean heritage. Do, let's talk about building relationships with the African community, because even me, I'm working on that. Cause y'all, everybody knows me. Y'all know how I feel about black Americans. I'm one of the most tribalistic motherfuckers that there is. You know what I mean? And everybody knows I am a tribalistic asshole. I will let everybody motherfucker know in a minute, but we all have to understand that they are still our brothers and sisters too. And right. we have common ancestors. We have very similar cultures. We, we do things the same. We talk shit a little bit different. But how can African Americans, because a lot of African Americans are like, well, they sold us into slavery, especially the West Africans. That's a hard one right there. That's a hard one because a lot of, for, like, like for me, when I came to Africa, uh, I'll share this story real quick. To me, it was like, even though I was in Uganda, not in West Africa, but it's like a lot of black people, people don't know this, a lot of African Americans, when they get to Africa, a lot of people will just kiss the ground. Um, it's, it's a common thing that a lot of black people do when they get to Africa, but you know, there is some hostility. Some people think that, you know, Africans are sold us into slavery. They don't look at us as our same people. Um, you know, they, they think that they're better than us. How do you think a lot of black people, cause maybe there might be some people in that pro black community warrior thing. How do we get our people out of that mindset to want to work with the continent, be interested in what's going on on the continent? Because people like you, 
people like Dinah Samir and Dinah Samir, he, he didn't went crazy with it. He all in the in the villages and everything. Oh yeah, I mean, I gotta give it to him because I'm, even like people like myself, I'm not in that life. So it's good to see another brother just uh, take it to another level and and and, uh, and show people more on a village lifestyle, more dealing with spirituality and things like that. So and that's why we need more and more of us interested in doing things in Africa. That way we can all we can show more of a different aspect of things to open the minds of uh, of, of other people. Um, and then the part about selling each other and saving now, we try our best whenever we go to the dungeons to, to get, uh, you know, to, 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 to illustrate a story and explain the situation as best as we could as a people and explain to people that it's not as simple as that. Uh, it's easy just to, just to, just to look at that, uh, but it's not as simple. So I take our folks from where our ancestors did the, uh, the march into the, to taking their last bath. And yes, that, that's that situation I had to deal with our people because white people just weren't in, weren't in the interior in Africa like that. I mean, that just wasn't something that uh, they were able to really do. Uh, so yes, a lot of our people had to really just, you know, really make dirty deals. And sometimes we don't know how those deals went. You, you know, me and you could be brothers and one of us get kidnapped and then you're told, you know, you're told um, either you, you know, either you tell where, you know, where people are or, you know, they take you or do this to your family and, you know, and, and so on and so on. But uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a story where we as a people must learn to make sure that we have a clear understanding of this thing that will never happen again. And that's why it's so important to, when you go to like West Africa, you go to somewhere where they have a Holocaust dungeon mm -hmm. or a safe dungeon, just like, just like uh, uh, European Jews are, or go to, you know, they, they have their place uh, in Europe where they go, you know, to reconnect to what happened to their ancestors in, in, in their Holocaust. And this is our Holocaust, uh, which, you know, we paid a hell of a cost. So, you know, it's, it's like, you know, all right, why not just go and find out for yourself, learn for yourself? Um, because us banging each bang like that, Africans uh, don't like African-Americans, that we just get nowhere. And then while we're doing that, you mentioned all the flights I'm sure you're flying down on was filled up with nothing but other people, maybe a very small percentage of black people. Right. And black people that you did saw were mainly black people local to that, you know, whatever country you're going to. And right. then as far as Africans in the diaspora itself, very few percent of us. Usually when I go, you know, it's like 30 to 40 of us. And it's like, that's as good as it get. Um, other than that, um, you know, it, it's just something uh, where, you know, where we just literally have to just try our best to educate our people away from that. Because when we take an attitude, we're missing out on business investment and a lot of wonderful things that we could be doing in the continent. Um, Asians aren't, you know, Asians and European uh, countries aren't just in the continent fighting over certain things because, you know, because Africa is a mess and unorganized and dirty and Africa is all these terrible things. They're doing it because that's where all the riches, all the wealth, and that's where the future is. Let me ask you this. How do you think, because a brother just uh, donated, I'm a follower, so shout out to brother Theus. My boy from Nigeria says African don't like black Americans. Why is he saying it's a lie? Please explain. Oh, wow. um, yeah, I guess he's asking you that because he, cause, uh, I guess he's saying that Nigerians or, or Africans don't like black Americans. You said that that's not what you've experienced, and, and certainly that's not what I experienced when I was there. But what do you what do you think about that? Because a lot of African Americans have that concern that you know, hey, these people they don't like not like me. They might try to do something to me. What do you what do you think about that as a concern for future people who might want to go to Africa? Yeah, we're gonna have our issues with that, uh, but you know, yeah, man, it's yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have our issues with that, but it's. It's, it's something that, you know, you're probably going out there and when you go to a country like Ghana and you talk with the people, you know, you see something different and then you, you explain to people that you are you are going to have those keyboard warriors in, in, in countries like Ghana and, you know, in America and they're going to be going back and forth with each other, talking about I don't like you and I don't like you. And they're basically speaking for the rest of us who are practically traveling back and forth and building those relationships. And that's the part about when you and I are talking more of that, all this sort of talking and, 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 and you know and, and running them out stuff just gotta stop. It's like everything needs to go back to where it was, like like how you know I used to go up. It was about real, and if you ain't real, people call you out as an imposter and then they shut you down and then you're off the scene. You literally go back and hide hide into the alley. You know, what I mean you couldn't come around and talk about you as you know, you you badass and you all of this and then not prove that you're that. You know, so um but then again, you know, like I said, it's so easy for these people to hide and you know, hide in chat rooms and hide all over the place. And uh, they should just feel ashamed for themselves because, you know, they're just making the rest of us look bad. And then that's become that mentality of someone there in Nigeria. And then, you know, and then, you know, so it just goes on and on. And 
you know, but let's never really get anywhere with that. Yeah, let me let me say that. I, I think even in Ice Brother, I think that's the wrong attitude to have. Um, I think uh, he says you're talking around the question. Well, <laughs> I'm talking about the question. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I think that's. I mean, I, I don't know if a one person can speak for everybody, right? Because even like I'll have people that will say, "Oh, I don't like Mexican people," but they have like two best or three best Mexican friends. You know what I mean? I think how people look at you is based off an individual basis. I think that that's really the thing. Um, at least in my opinion, I I don't I don't think that Africans don't like black people. Um, I think that might be the case in America sometimes, but in Africa, I don't think that's the case. I think that a lot of people are very open to you, um, very wanting, especially if you're interested in the culture. We're doing things to help help you what you want to do. Um, those people who are not full of shit, obviously, but I don't I, I don't I never felt that when I go. Uh, let me shout out to Brother Maurice. I still feel like Africans, I still like Africans, but I've experienced the hate from Eritrean and Ethiopians. The women are fine as hell, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they're more uh, standoffish. But let me let me kind of ask you this, um, Brother Bomani. You talk about the Chinese that are, um, you know, doing things in Africa. I see a big in, uh, groups of Indians that, you know, especially in East Africa, in Kenya, Uganda in particular, running the economies doing things like that. Um, what can African-Americans bring to the table um, or us blacks in the West to Africa to compete, um, you know, basically with, with the Chinese? Because obviously I feel like we would treat our own people better than they would. What do you think that African-Americans can bring to the table? Because obviously a lot of us are going to be coming in with small business ideas. What industries can we compete in to help Ghana, Kenya, those countries become better? Well, um uh, great question. Um, and a lot of things that you mentioned as far as making it better is really, um, you know, really building the infrastructure in the country. Um, and that's why it's ideal if we have our uh, engineering groups and, you know, black organizations who have great pool of talented people that they can get in the country. But then when they do it, when they start doing that, the issue is that when you're dealing with, you know, a, a China or India, or Japan, they're not only coming with the best of their people as far as scientists, engineers, and whatever we, that needs to be done, they also come up with the capital and they come up with equipment. So they basically kill all, almost 100% of competition. And, um, and so if we want to compete, we got to, you know, we got to organize ourselves more here around certain, you know, certain things that go some about talents and organization and really be about going to the, those countries, building the energy. Like right now in Ghana, we have a nice business repatriation and, and business investment conference. And that is a pool of a lot of us that are working together to doing things in the country, like getting land. And the, the land that you get, you you know maybe you you, you develop into a real community. Maybe you know, maybe it's a land, uh, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 acres, anywhere from 50 to 200 homes. And you build in the infrastructure in there, and then you prove to yourself that we can come and build certain things. It's hard for the government to take us up on anything serious because. We have never really had any organized because we black Americans, African Americans are not represented by a, you know a country or a nation. They represent we, we, most of us or most of our people here are just you know like I said about organization or the individual coming to do certain things. So exactly for community, we gotta really network with each other more. Like I like those two organizations I was talking about before: the African American Association of Ghana and the Caribbean Association of Ghana. I've had both of them at our annual business and investment conference out there. And um, you know, it's you know, we have all the right elements. It's just, it's just, we just have too many people in the just the audience out there talking, run their mouth, and not enough people out there in the field playing and making it happen. Uh, so I feel like once we start building more of an energy and showing what we can do more on a community base, then we can contribute to the higher level of things like building more things dealing with uh, you know, like internet is just it right there. You know, the whole you know, you we want to you know more of us want to see this a higher speed and quality of internet. And that's something we can also build, bringing in technology company, uh, finance companies are good. You know, but those of us who, you know, could do more in the microfinance area, you know, we can build ourselves to where we can eventually compete. And then the more and more of us that go like to Ghana, like you know, Ghana has a nice pool of us. You know, people like myself. Once we get settled there, and we, we're talking and working with more people. We can build more of a united front because we have a nice united front of people there in Ghana. Um, from different uh, different uh, black organizations, and they're the reason why we have citizenship along with all the veterans there. But so tell all the keyboard warriors, you know, yes, Ghana is one of the few one of the few countries where you can say 
you know, we know more than like several people with citizenship. And the only reason that that happened is our people going there and you know traveling, doing tourism like myself, building business, showing an interest in the country. Because the right. government is not going to look at any group of people and say, why should I give these group of people citizenship? What are they doing? So I remember, I remember it was a time where it was a lot of conversation. We talked and we were sharing our information and it was put into a pool of energy to show that what all of us are doing from building, you know, building hospitals, uh, building communities and doing all the things that we're doing in, in Ghana, which a lot of times get undermined but the African-American energy in Ghana is very impressive. And it can, it can get much better once we, you know, you know, once some of these people eventually step their game up and us call them out, they have no choice to step their game up or run it back to in the alley. And when they get into these countries, they're gonna realize that, you know, either I'm gonna step it up and do what needs to be done and build, because you can literally be in a country 10, 20 years, and then you, you know, then you wanna do so much, but only get so little done because it's just not that simple. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, shout out to Brother King Richards that just came in the chat. I want to give him a shout out. This is one also I want to tell a lot of you pro-black community keyboard warriors. And that's the same thing that I'm glad you said that. Anywhere you go, you have to prove yourself. And again, I see so many, even, I mean, this, this brother right here, I don't know if he was serious or not, but shout out to Dick James and Rental James. The least Africans can do is buy us a plane ticket. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean nigga. Nice, but I mean, you're talking about economies where you have 75 60, 80 percent unemployment. I mean, you know, let's be realistic. Uh, yeah. Government that sell their own people. I know people are working hard trying to build the economy. <clears throat> government setting up their Swiss accounts so they can do their four to eight years and dip off on everybody. You know, these are the things that you know we deal with, and yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the welcome mat hasn't been rolled out like we wanted to. Uh, you know, from you know from African continent. Say, hey, my brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, we apologize that uh, you know, that things went wrong, and some of us, you know, some of us, us we were stolen and taken away. Uh, we want to offer you this to come back. You know, it's, I, I wish it was that simple, but it's not. Um, and then the distraction of just the, this capitalistic world that we live in, where African governments are bought and sold like you know cheap hookers. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I mean, and, and that's the only thing I can really think of. They just bought and sold like just like a snap of a finger. You can get any of them to just do anything with this with this little bit of money. And then, and then the, the people in general suffer from that. So, yeah, the people don't have anything because they've been being robbed for the last several uh, generations. And, and, and brother, let me say that that's something that I did be noticed. Um, and actually, it's my kind of country because I like the fact that you can just give motherfucker a, a few dollars and <laughs> a lot of that shit goes away real quick. Any problems, like hey, here, hey, 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 dog, let me. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? Yeah, that's. I mean, it's a good and a bad thing. But you know, let me let me talk about that because. You know, a lot of a lot of people don't. A, a lot of African Americans kind of feel some type of entitlement. Like when they go to Europe, they know that you know. Like when we think about going to London, or we think about going to Paris, we know we're not going to Paris or London talking shit to them motherfuckers at all. We know that if we're gonna be there, you're gonna have to pay for your flight. You know what I mean? It's gonna be you, you know, like ain't gonna be no. You ain't gonna go to Air France talking about hey y'all niggas need to give me a motherfucking free uh, a, a ticket. Cause you know they gonna cut your black ass out. But when it comes to Africa, we'd be like, oh no, nah, them niggas they owe us, they owe us that. And again, I think that actually hurts us because when we want to come to a new place, we don't want to prove ourselves. It even happens in Black America. And I think a lot of these, a lot of a lot of black people, um, what they're trying to do is they're using that same entitlement complex that fucks up Black America. Because you niggas is lazy. A lot of y'all don't want to do shit. I'm talking to you. You niggas know how I'm, a, I'm, I'm about to turn up. I'm trying to calm down. I'm a, let, me, let me back on up. Because y'all niggas know. Um, but nobody owes you shit. <laughs> let me just say that. Not Africa. Not, nobody. And even if they fucking owe you something, get into your mind that they don't owe you shit. And even if they do owe you shit, I've always told you, you black, your black ass don't have shit coming. Not a motherfucking thing. They're not gonna give you shit, nigga. What the no fuck are you talking about? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm about to win. Uh, I'm sorry about this. I'm about to say, just like you're not getting any uh, reparations. You know what I'm saying? You're not getting ep reparations, nigga. You ain't gonna get no free Joe off. You're not getting nothing. You're not getting none of that shit. You ain't gonna get none of that shit, nigga. You ain't got nothing coming. None of you niggas got a motherfucking thing coming. That's like a, 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 nothing. Clown somebody. Give me shit, nigga. nigga. Gonna get a whole city in Africa. You're gonna get a whole city in Africa to do what? What are you gonna build there? <laughs> you're gonna build 
That is funny, yo. Um, yeah, the entire mentality of our folks is crazy. Like, I have these folks like, yeah, man, them, them Africans should just get out of our way and just give us a portion of Africa so we can show them how to build a city. <laughs> I was like, whoa, wow. I was like, wow. I was like, all right. And I was like, hey, man, you lead, I'll follow. You know, talk is. <laughs> and, and, and the thing about it is that mentality is even if they do give you some shit, let's say they gave your ass whatever the fuck you want. You want it. Hella cows or camels or whatever the fuck you want over there. Uh, cheeseburgers. As soon as they give you the shit, all you're going to keep doing is asking for more shit. So this is why some of these niggas that have this mentality don't need to go to Africa. Because if you have that mentality, you're never going to do anything, number one, for your motherfucking self. And you're not going to damn sure gonna do nothing for them. So why would you want to go over there with that attitude? Like, do you think a lot of niggas have that attitude? Like, Africa owes or something. Yeah, but I think too much people have that attitude, and that's why I don't have four or five tour buses a year being filled up to go to African continent because we feel like, well, I'm not going to go there until they, they do this for me, until they give this to me, until until they, they apologize 500 times more to me that, that you know, that you know, and, and, and so on and so on. And just like, we you know, we have a beef with the American system. You know, we're quick to use racism, white supremacy, racism, white, I think I'm racism and white supremacy out, you know what I'm saying? And you know, I mean, I love my brothers and sisters in all of our, uh, our black communities, and uh, you know, and you know, because in every single one of these communities, we have progressive people that are being, you know, that have to deal with the the, you know, the, the shit talkers that are making their communities look bad, or making the things that they're doing look, look they're doing look bad. Uh, it, you know, it's it's, and that's why we just have to just you know, get the raid and just spray these people. You know what I mean, spray them out the way. Let me let me uh, uh shout out some super chats. Uh, shout out to brother Ill Wills. What up, O'Shea? Salute to my man Bodie Money. He is about that life, especially when you act up on his tour. Salute to him. Y'all remember that class of stream? <laughs> oh, um, and shout out to brother Martin Collins, Esquire. We have all we need to thrive. If you cannot understand this, you are dead. Thank you, counselor. That's a smart brother right there. He's a lawyer. Okay, thank you, brother. I, I might need you because. I might be cussing some niggas out. Um, I need somebody to get me out of jail, brother. So you make sure you email me your information in case I need to get you. Give me a discount, though. I thank you, brother, for the comment. Let, let's talk about these pro blacks who, who are always blaming the white man for every motherfucking thing. Can you talk about that? That goes on a lot in these pro black community keyboard. It's the white man, every goddamn thing fault. Can we talk about that real quick? Yeah, absolutely. It becomes a, a sickness where, you know, a lot of times if I'm in um, an organization, I'm doing some work with my own brothers and, you know, I'm trying to get them to be more effective. I'm like, yo, we can't sit around and talk about white people, this white people that. I'm like, it's, it's, you know, we can tell a few jokes and it's funny and you, know, you laugh and everything. But at the same time, too, you know, you have to move forward and get some things done because all that jiving and talking about them ain't going to do nothing. That's exactly what they want you to do, distract you from your focus. That's why even myself, I have to make sure I don't do too many Dear White Devil videos because you get caught up into that stuff and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, nothing gets uh, done from that. So, uh, literally, you know, literally, I mean, I've been around people like that. Um, and what I've tried to do is be a practical example. Like when I came into our conscious community, I was, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm going to be the one that's actually going to take more of us to Africa and not sit around and talk about other people because they don't know enough about Malcolm or Garvey and so on, which I think is, is terrible. You just insult people because they don't know a whole lot about the history. And I was like, that's why some people don't like some of us because you know some of us take that stance. So it's like consistent battle, man. And people like myself, you know, goal is to you know be one of that energy to you know really bring us together and really shut down these clowns. Let me uh, do this. Let me let me ask you some of your future plans. Um, so you know we have the pro blacks, but um, what are some of your future plans? I know you had some issues on your last trip, but let me talk about the last trip a little bit before you have your future plans. You had some people that you were trying to hire and they were fucking up. How do you deal with trying to give other blacks opportunities, especially since you are in Ghana a lot of times? You do hire African Americans. How do those employees act in comparison to some of the African employees that you may hire? Yeah, uh, that is a good question. Um, you know, and for the most part, um, all the people I've traveled with, you know, we've been a close-knit uh, family because what we do is that we, you know, we, we're spending that whole time together for two weeks. So you know, you build good relationships. But unfortunately, this time I did have two, uh, you know, two fake Rasta brothers uh, with me um, that you know, I thought was really down with certain work and wanted, they wanted to get into tourism. And, you know, my goal was like, you know, to help them by, you know, usually if you say you want to get into this life of business, you know, I, you know, I work it out for you to be my assistant. But what better way to do something than be the assistant of the boss that knows what he's doing, that got the experience. 
And you know, when you know, when people when they're crying and complaining that they don't want to go to the dungeons and they got on all black and they don't have all white, you know, all those are like you know unnecessary complaining. Um, and then because of the situation where Ghanaians, you know, they've been trying to you know, like these are also positions that usually you know, I will hire Ghanaians. So they're basically taking up a position for, for that maybe a, a Ghanaian would definitely work more, work harder, and then you know the deal wouldn't have to be you know they'll they'll want less. Um, so I always appreciate the, the, the many people that's out there that want those opportunities. Unfortunately, sometimes we give the wrong opportunities to people. Um, and so basically, once I realize that you know you have some of our people that's going to take advantage of us being the boss because yeah, I'm a cool person. I, I go out to you know I take people out to the nightclub, a party, and you know we have a great time. We eat together, we bond together. Uh, but at the same time, too, when it's time to get up in the morning and the first half of the day, you know, it's work and business. And even though I'm you know I'm your brother and you know I'm so the boss of the operation and I don't you know I need you to work together to to make sure that you know we look like a professional operation because the rest of the world is looking at us to see if are we going to execute and do certain things so that's why doing a tour the issues i had with these people i kept quiet and i kept on pulling them to the side talking to them and you know i just uh, I, I just couldn't take it no more so i held on long enough to get on the plane before i started hitting the block button and so I, you know and start uh working you know, working stuff in 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 you know, on Facebook to where dinosaur yourself or other people reach out to me so I can tell my story on someone else's uh, platform. And that basically just gave me energy to let people know that, you know, uh, for those who are coming on the tour, just follow the guidelines and the details and, you know, be respectful of the time the bus moves and leaves. And I'm one person that I may have two or three videos of me going off and screaming and yelling, but other than that, I'm calm and cool just like I am today. And even, you know, calmer because that's not what I want people to know. But at the same time, too, I feel like it's necessary to do that, especially when you see a trend of people that you build relationships, you love, you know, and but then you see them taking advantage of you and you're like, yo, just because I'm cool with you. And that, I was like, yo, I'm working the best deal for you and everything. We're building something to get we're building something together. There's no need for you to do certain things. So I just, you know, I just cleaned the house. And now I have more of my family, my younger brother, sister, and my mother working with my business, which was always the intention. And everything because you know they've been around they've traveled with me and they've just been nothing but great sport and then i have some good friends some good ex-military friends out that have come on with me and you know yeah so i really you know you have to go through those things and that way you can know the right type of black people to hire because you know we we support a lot of black energy and you know and the thing of it is we have to make sure that we always have the right people to represent our business just like when you know, any corp any white corporations are hiring people, they want to know all kinds of things about you. They want to make sure that you're not gonna mess up their company, you're gonna cause drama and things like that. And a lot of times we don't bring our people to all of those processes. You know, we basically like will hire people based on you know, based on in you know, our referral or based on that's the fact that that's your friend or your you know, somebody you're close with. So I've gotten to the point where I'm I'm getting out of the friend, homie, cool thing business. It's you know, and and you know, and and that you know, me going off like that and releasing some of my closest people open up for where I can take business to another level and really connect with the more serious people that I can build with. Uh, because if, because as long as the people that you're working with are doing some of these things, your business are never going to take it to the next level. And at the end of the day, it's about business development. We spend a lot of money with black owned business, hotels, transportation company. Um, and you know, that's what it's about. It's about creating business and, and, and spreading the resources. That's like, you know, I lived in, in, in Brooklyn and the Jews in Crown Heights, they don't, Play around, man. They, they from slum lords to pimp lords to all kind of different lords to business owner. You know, it's like they control segments and cycle, recycle the money, and 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 that's what we have to learn to do. And so we talk about all this money that we make from Black America, but then we don't put it back in a certain Black economy like the African continent. You know, use your use your paycheck, buy a ticket on South African uh, Airways or uh, Ethiopian Airways, fly from Washington Dulles and go directly to South Africa or you know or Ghana, and you and your crew. Welcome to the world. Welcome to the international world of business. Welcome to the ball game. Welcome to the game. Now you're not an armchair revolutionary anymore, and you're not a keyboard warrior. <laughs> Let's go to work. <laughs> no, I, I think that's a that's a great thing. Uh, what you're saying, especially the the last part. You know, um, especially Ethiopian Airlines. I flew with them. I flew Kenyan Airlines. Kenyan Airways was really nice. Ethiopian Airlines was really, really, really nice. I flew in Africa. And also black owned banks. Yeah, I flew South uh, South African Airways. 
that was really good, and it was good. And also flying with, I noticed flying within Africa is fucking expensive as hell. But um, you know, I definitely agree with you a lot. Let me let me do this real quick. Let me um, just shout out some of the people that have donated. Um, Harry Mingo, hello Shay, Big Game James, Arinto James. Why do black people always have to take people's shit and move forward? <laughs> Everyone else gets rectified. We have to draw the line somewhere. I mean, bro, I, I understand what you're what you're saying. You know what I mean? As far as as far as that. So uh Lamar, uh AJJ, uh, much respect, great stream, keep it techie. Um Ill Wills, what's up, O'Shea? Salute to Bamani, he's about that life, especially in his tourist. Salute to him. Um so oh my brother Ted Randolph. He says, Sup, O'Shea, what's up, bro? Between Accra and Kamasi, where would you go for vacation? Um, and that's for what's up with all the armed robberies? I'm going down for Christmas. Um, my brother from Canada, man. You let me know when you're going, man. I'll try to come see you. you let me know, man. If you, if you know when you're there, I'll try to. If, if, if I can see you there, I definitely will do. Let's talk about that real quick, man, because I've noticed, right? Mm -hmm. Almost everybody that I've seen, have you ever heard of Natural Organa Girl? Uh, yes, uh, I've heard of her and I've seen her interview with you on the show. Um, yeah, 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 she's Natural Organa Girl, she's from uh, England, right? yeah, yeah, she's from England. And there's another girl that I, I've seen in Ghana. Um, she has a really good channel. She's building some house, uh, apartments. And then um, na uh, um, Native Born. All three of them have complained about having their house broken into um, and having their st shit stolen. Wow. All of them. All three of them. Um, what, I mean, what would you say? About, this is, this is a, um, a, 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 a big concern, you know, obviously. Well, um, without a doubt, and that's why I have not moved yet because um, the only reason I'm only way I'm gonna move is I want to, you know, be in a true community, and that's why I fought along the whole time trying to be, work with other people to build a true community where, where if you decide you want to move, or maybe you know maybe your sister or somebody close to you decide you want to move, and then they want to make sure that they're safe. We want to make sure that we have a, a community operation to where we have security and certain things because. When you, you know, just being from somewhere, from being from Jamaica, that's just the way the situation works. You, you know, people prey on so-called foreigners. You know, uh, they look at you as the one with the money. So when you come to the country, you know, there's something in your house that got something. So they know that some of us don't, are not from here. So we may have to, may have to leave and go somewhere else. And we may not necessarily have, always have someone there watching our home. And then maybe if we do have watch somebody watching our home, maybe they're working with the criminals and things like that. So. Um, building true communities uh, like Fiancro, when when if we if it if it, it would have worked out, it, you know it didn't. But if it had worked out, that was that purpose to be able to provide. Like if my mother, you know, if my mother was looking to move and things, and other people, you know, you know that our elders, because we have a, we have a whole generation of people that are about to retire, and I personally would love to see more of them in Ghana in some of these communities. And that's why I'm trying to fight with trying to work with so many of our people there in Ghana to say, hey, let's work the deal, build the communities. That way, our people can, from the African diaspora, can come over, have a peace of mind. Then we use some of that that you know, that that buying power, and then we you know we put it together, and then we do some of the things you want to do. Like people, I'll say, you know, some of the elders that are coming over. You know, their biggest concern, you know, and they've mentioned it many times over, is this: they want a top-notch hospital to where they feel a sense of, you know, a peace of mind if something was to go wrong, or you know, because they see a trend of people. Uh, some of our folks are flying to Europe or America to come back to hospitals to do surgery. Like some <clears> of our military <throat> folks, you know, they'll come back and they'll go to the VA hospital, you know, which would make sense because, you know, that's a benefit that you work for. From, you know, that's the purpose of, you know, joining the military. You want a lifetime benefit, you know, in case you, you know what I'm saying, your insurance, you know, at the, you know, another job or something is not working. But uh, it, it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's a situation where it's going to happen and, you know, we only thing we can do is really protect ourselves. It's going to be that situation if we move to Jamaica or wherever else in the world. Um, people are looking at African Americans as people with money and resources, and you know, so just like white people from America and Europe are looking at, you know, those, those are people that usually get, end up getting kidnapped in countries like when I was in Brazil and you know, places like that, because people are just trying to follow the money. Um, people, some people feel like you know, America and Europe has sucked the money rest out of the rest of the world. And they're, I don't know, they may feel like they're coming back at the, the people that are moving and doing things. And, and you know, so I don't play around. You know, I, I you know, I have a, I have, and last time, you know, you saw me I had a security is a licensed policeman with an AK 47. 
and I was like instructing to shoot with a target we point if you know if people try to play games but I don't want to disrespect anybody from Nigeria uh, but I have to say this a lot of the terrible things that goes on in Nigeria with jacking and things like that and I'm not saying it's solely that because I do remember a time when Ghana wasn't the way it was but it seemed like some of the bad elements of Nigeria is leaked over into countries like Ghana and yes the um the crime rate has gone up so that's why we're more concerned about really building communities and having security uh so you may see some of those things online uh, and that's why we do tour operations so we can provide the fullest level of security uh, for people and make sure that no one has any problem and if people decide to stay back we usually make sure that they're connected to people and tell them how to move around and things but if you're literally going to move and you're going to build a house around not many of us you literally have to make sure your place is secure you literally have to get good people to watch your place uh when you leave or else you're going to be a victim no i i definitely agree man um so basically let me get, everybody get the likes up on here and guys you know go to my brother bomani tahemba's channel subscribe very great things let me just ask you one last question man how has the youtube channel promote you i mean have you gotten a lot of tourists from people on youtube how has this channel helped you grow your business on youtube Oh yeah, um, YouTube is the business. YouTube is awesome. Um, I mean, it's the greatest video platform. I mean, people like myself just upload. I have almost 200 videos I uploaded from our Ghana tour. Uh, it shows every single facet of Ghana. We don't really show much. Stuff. We don't really show much in the night. Um, and so when people are looking at coming on a tour, I got 14 photo galleries in Facebook of every single tour that I've done in Ghana and in many other countries are also. Um, but it's just, we're talking about um, talking about Ghana. That documentation alone, because what people do, they search, and then when they search, you know, yeah, you, you're talking about people who work very hard for their money, so they're gonna look for someone who, you know, who can properly put together a website and put together details and have business organized. When people call, send messages, do anything, you know, I, I'm, I mean, I'm usually just in access to my computer and phone just throughout the entire week, and just basically be able to communicate with them, give them the proper details, documents up front. Uh, so that helps along with uh, YouTube because YouTube will get you to connect with people. But then, you know, some people, you know, the people call them from YouTube and then, and then they realize that, you know, they're not going to answer their phone or return phone calls. So YouTube, Facebook, all the social energy. Then I got stacks of, um, you know, stacks of cards, uh, business cards that I got all over the, all over the U.S. I got friends who have uh, Pan-African bookstores and different uh, businesses. And they're, they, they, they I mail them these packages of these cards and they put them all over the place from East Coast, West Coast, uh, Midwest, and so on. Uh, so uh, YouTube is, a, and, then, and then the importance of YouTube is that once they see the information on the website, everything is going to bounce back to YouTube because people want to practically see how you look, see how you're moving, how you're handling business. And when people seeing you, I mean, like for years I've been moving big groups of people, 30, 40 busload of many Africans and African Americans. That's 30 or 40 different personalities that you're dealing with. And you know, it's a you know, it's a true business enterprise because you have to be ready for these things. So um, you know, the goal is to always just do more documentation on YouTube and everywhere else and just keep on getting it cycled because that's naturally gonna have people be able to compare that to what the rest of the people have. Like I'm trying my best to be as nice. I'm try, uh, nice to make sure that you know other people can do tours like this. But I'm trying to get, you know, but it's like people have to step the game up. I tell, you know, it's not me just wiping out their competition because that's what we do. Even with the, like the November tour, I got November 16th to the 26th. You got 10 days in Ghana for 2,950 bucks. Uh, that includes the tickets from anywhere in the U.S. Full accommodations for those 10 days. Uh, uh, business conference uh, access entrance. Uh, you know, to all the things that we have on the full itinerary, our own tour bus, um, full program, full staff, and everything is well organized to where we help people get their, their documents to go through all the information with them, conference calls and over the phone. And, you know, I want to say, you know, I, I stepped up that level of business because I wanted to see it, you know, I wanted more and more of our people to step up in competition, but it's so much open. Business is really open as far as like tourism. It's like one of the most important business. So I did hear people talking about they want to go to Rwanda, they want to go to Angola. And I tell them that, you know, it's like, stop talking. You guys have been talking about this, going to these countries for years and, and bringing your groups there to do business and things. I was like, you know, it's, it's no joke. You know, you have Dr. Harnett. She has been to some of these countries and she kind of showcased, you know, certain uh, business and investment. Uh, but it's yeah. like, you have to put your money together and you have to do, you know, you have to make it work. You know what I mean? And then when you, you know, that's why people like myself have a profitable business. Like I know sometimes, you know, some of our people in our community, 
uh, including some of my own uh, conscious brothers be hating. And be, you know, like I've been labeled a capitalist from day one. And I had to battle my own conscious brothers from day one. And I, and I, was, you know, and I still take the same stance. It's like people like myself make capitalist money, as they call it. And what we do is, we, you know, we reroute that money to black home business. Show me the crime in that. <laughs> I'm telling them, I'm like, show me the crime in that. Or show me the crime that just because I joined the military and learned some skills to better myself, I'm a spy. Show me the crime in that. <laughs> now, and that's why these pro-black communities and all these things, I, I, I like certain elements, but those are the elements I don't like. Like you mentioned, people calling you coon. Why do you have this coon on your channel? Why you, you know, and stuff like that. It's like, you know, it's like when you clearly see people trying to make a difference and trying to do better, give them some level of support it's hard for any of us to get out here use our own money because ain't white the white people that they talk about and the racism racism white supremacy system they talk about we, they, they already know that they ain't giving us any money so that should give them even more <laughs> give us more credit that we use our own money right and we have to go to work a job work a business save your money and spend it with your own people in africa because you need all the airlines you name are black owned airlines that hire black people right yeah and that's the thing like a lot of people will say that and People don't know, like, Africa is not cheap. You know, even from coming from Europe, it's not cheap, especially in Poland. Like, you're coming from, like, the UK, certain countries, France, Amsterdam, all right, you live there, it's it's, uh, it's, it's good. But for me, like, I'm living, like, four hours away from the airport. I have to take a taxi sometimes or to you know, train to the airport. That's money and time. Then you get there, you stay in there, like, two or three hours for your flight leaves. Then you end up somewhere, you know, in Doha, you're there for, like, four more hours. Like it took me almost 26 hours to go to South Africa, you know, in all my travel time. So not only are you investing your own money when you go to Africa, you know, you're investing a whole day's journey, you know, and a lot of people who have never been will just, you know, talk shit about somebody like me or even you because you have a difference of opinion. And I think black people got to get over that. But um, so I, I'm just glad that you came on today, brother, onto the show and, and, and dropped some knowledge. Is there anything else you want to tell the people today? Um, and I'll put all your stuff in the description. Make sure you let me know that I'll put it in the description for you. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, the only thing else I have to say uh, to our uh, folks is, um, you know, um, understand that um, one of the biggest problems is all of us, like, like literally all of us, we're all pointing fingers at each other. Uh, as far as, the, you know, as far, you know, I even have people pointing fingers at our ancestors, people who are dead can't even defend themselves, and you know, and pointing fingers at people who are trying to do their best. But uh, the situation is not about pointing fingers. It's, you know, we, we as black people, it's our responsibility to build the things that we need. It's not nobody's, it's not the conscious community, it's not the nationalists, it's not the pro-black, it's not this, it's not the Hebrew is the light, it's not this, it's just us together as black people have to build what we need to build for our children. And one of the things we have to realize is that we have, a, we have told a lot of our children to go to university and get degrees and everything. And last I remember, you know, we, we're not the ones throwing up um, big firms that's hiring hundreds of thousands of people. And Absolutely. that's the problem because then now, you know, our children are being disgruntled. Like, all right, I got my degree. Like you told me to get, like, well, one of my uh, customers, uh, he had a son, you know, drop off one of his computers. And, uh, you, know, I was, you know, I was like, I was like, man, I haven't seen a long time. He's like, yeah, I just finished law school. And he's like, man, I don't know what to do, man. I'm trying to find a job. I don't know if I, sh uh, how to do. And, you know, he's, and he's like scrambling. Um, but because, we don't build enough business enterprise to where our children can decide. My son is ready. My son is ready to be the boss. You know, he's like he's got his own office back there, and you know, he's in a lifetime of training. By the time he reach eighteen, he can, you know, he can be the boss of working one of the departments that we develop, whether it's a technical department or a business administration or tourism and so on. Uh, but we have to begin to build these business enterprise and create that opportunity for them. That way we can, you know, that way we can recycle that resources and build true communities and really have our stake in the world. Uh, and that's what I tell people is like, if you ain't got nothing productive to say on YouTube, get off YouTube because you, you, you're getting in our way, you know? And, um, you know, and, and that's, that's really it. So family, that's why we name our business Africa for the Africans because that's what it is. We as African people in the African diaspora and African content, that's our continent. And, but, and it's only, and that is our responsibility, whether we believe we sold each other in the savior or whatever the situation is, it's still our responsibility. I don't ask for anyone on the African continent to give me authorization to come to Africa. That is my birthright. Ghana is where my ancestors from. It's my birthright to return and do the right thing and work with our people. So family, none of you of our folks in African diaspora need any excuse to, to go to the continent. That is your birthright. Take advantage of that opportunity. Don't let someone from the continent tell you that we don't like you or you know anybody from the continent that say that they are no authority or no power to do anything to you anyway. They're just a sideline haters, just like we have the sideline haters here. 
and they're just like just like we have armchair nationalists there we have armchair nationalists there yeah and you know and we just got to keep doing what we have to do and i like i like what you, you said we have to really be about building relationships and that's what uh, africa for africans have done we have built relationships to where so many people from the diaspora and the continent are working together mm -hmm. i just let me help a sister from europe today because she didn't know how to go to ghana and everything she's trying to plan a family trip and i and i for the most part people like myself don't charge consultant fee and I, usually a lot of times a wave or certain fees and we just try to help people so uh you know it's all love family uh let's build africa together and if you're not about the work you know let's go back into the alley and you know we won't have any beef with you yeah and, and thanks again brother brandon Kabwina. he says brother uh, bomani peace bro we got to bring also to ethiopia uh keep putting in work fellas much respect to both y'all and again i want to shout out to dr movie she was in the chat uh yes, good work my yeah. sister good work man yeah. your inspiration is for a whole generation dr movie is cool as fuck. i'm just letting you know probably one of my jamaicans uh, jamaican aunties and I, I mean literally like in face body structure everything like you know and that's how i tell people we're so much more in common when we just get rid of all those myths of you know bad energy yeah yeah really really i i, I was like man i hope she don't be weird and shit. That's what I was thinking before. But man, about the movie is cool. And she took me to this Kenyan restaurant and they had um they had ordered me one of these chickens and things, and it was like custom food. I fucked that chicken up. Um, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> I fucked that chicken up. I, I was eating all with my hands and shit. And it, it was it was great. You know, um, I didn't get the fish though, but I just, you know, we really don't, we really don't know that when we go out there, you know, um, we have a lot in common, you know what I mean? Especially, you know, uh, Mark, brother Marcus is A. Brown. He's going to be going out there next week. But yeah, I was like, I was like, at first I was like, man, I hope I hope she'll have no attitude, you know, because you know, you know how you have your preconceived notions. But I got up in there, she was cool as fuck. Yeah, I mean, real cool. Like, yeah, the sisters in Africa is awesome, cool. man. Um, you know, she don't like no polygamy though. They don't like no polygamy. Don't be talking about no polygamy. And, 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 and you know, about that, she ain't gonna fuck with you. But outside of the polygamy shit, yeah, and that's another. <laughs> a lot of times we just think it's this polygamy heaven, and not all of the sisters agree in, with that, and not all of them see certain things that way. But yeah. uh, because not everyone is born in like a village community where that's how that works. But uh, yeah, absolutely, um, <laughs> absolutely. Um, the one of the best things are uh, some of our brothers that's looking to connect to the continent can do is like, especially if you know if relationship is not working out for you and same as our sisters we have a lot of eligible bachelor and bachelorettes there on the continent that are waiting to build relationship with you and not everyone is about scamming you for visas and things like that i know sometimes we joke about that and not, not all the women and the men are trying to get your money you know you know you have other black people around the world that's really looking to build beautiful relationship with you know some of us as a people and uh and it starts by you know traveling and opening your mind so appreciate the time and thanks, you know, invite me on and uh, you know, for us to share something positive and progressive for our folks. And you and I coming from a uh, you know, different side of the energy and things. And, and you know, and I'm with you on that for Trump. And I want to actually see Trump get reelected so uh, you can put some more pressure on some of these uh, fake pro <laughs> and do something and come to Africa and build something. <laughs> and, and, oh, let me say this one thing, man. Um, through Dr. Moonby, um, well, through Wally Meyer, right? I flew into Kenya. Um, to, to meet Wally Meyer and Dr. Moonbeam. Wally Meyer had a subscriber by the name of John. And um, and I think when you came and picked this up, Dr. Moonbeam, he was the guy that was there. And he he watches um he watches your channel, Bo Mani. He watches he knew who I was. He knew who you were. Oh wow. And he knew who Dynas was. Um, but this dude, let me tell you how much love this this dude works for Care for. This brother, man, every day he came, he lived like like um way out. By, by this new mall is 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 wherever it was. It was almost like 30, 40 kilometers. This guy drove us everywhere that we needed to go. I'm talking about took us down to CBD, um, which is like you know in, in Kenya. He 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 showed us man so much love, man. And this dude is married. He's taking time away from his family. He was going above and beyond. I mean this. I mean you know I got my my own family members. If you show up, they ain't gonna do this shit. You know what I mean? And this is a dude who didn't know me, didn't know Wody Meyer. You know, he came over, he took, you know, um, he had to be to work at like six or seven in the morning. And I was trying to go to the club. I was like, nah, I just, no, I mean, I'll take you. He took me to the club, he, he stayed out there. Now, um, and, and he just he did, you know, he's he was he was went over and above and beyond. I still have not even had, I don't think a white person in Europe that was as, as nice as this guy was. So 
it just goes to show you that, you know what I mean, that that brother, man, was just so hospitable. Um, you know, Dr. Mumu took us everywhere. She had to fl- she missed her flight. Now, y'all don't know this. Dr. Mumbi had a flight that she missed fucking around with us. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, imagine that she probably had to pay extra money. She took us everywhere fucking around with us, missed her fucking flight. And, uh, but it wasn't my fault. That was more than my fault. I, it wasn't me. But, you know, they, this is what they did for us when we came out there. They didn't ask for shit. But uh, again, but I'm going to tell you though. African hospitality. Any of us who decided we want to get up. Look, as a matter of fact, the perfect example is Dinah Samir. He, Dennis Smith always have people offering their homes, their connection to him, and yeah. take care of him. And I, I, you know, I recommend people be inspired like that. I mean, if you, you know, if you're not into the group travel, be like our brother. Um, reach out, build some connections. You buy a plane ticket and connect. And I'm telling people, you're safe. Just make sure you do the research and make sure it's not in a certain any kind of volatile area. But for the most part, majority of all of the countries, that's what you're gonna get. Just keep away from like North Africa. <laughs> let me just say real quick. Anybody in Kenya, don't be hitting up Dr. Mubi talking about you want a tour. Y'all niggas better take some money over there. I'm telling you no. You better put put some money over there. Don't be going over there wasting people time. Talking about can you no bring your fucking go over there and get you about Man, five absolutely. to ten thousand Kenyan shillings. I'm gonna tell y'all niggas right now. When you show up to Africa and somebody is nice enough to do anything for you, you better give them some motherfucking money. I'm letting you niggas know. Don't be embarrassing us like that. You know what I mean? That's nigga shit. People take their time to fuck with your ass. You even if they don't want to take it, you better offer some shit. That I'm telling you, I know some of y'all niggas are like that. And I told her that these niggas, y'all better, you know, come up out your motherfucking pockets when you go over there with that bullshit. I'm just letting you niggas know. Yeah, absolutely. If, I, if I find out, it's gonna be a live stream about you. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be live. I'm letting you know, right? Go ahead, brother. Yeah, absolutely. We have to show love and uh, you know and, and and do it our folks. Um, and and you know and you know what you experience is a prime example of you know of what Africa truly is. Because I mean, your experience right there. You went you went to three countries. I mean, you're not back here telling us that people try to mob you, rob you, try to set you up. Women try to lure you in and, and try to tie you up. And, you know, you don't have any of those stories. Yeah. So I tell people, if you're safe. I'm safe, and other people are safe. Hey, uh, stop believing the hype. And don't let these people pull a fast one on y'all. Y'all talk about white people. To, you, you follow their example of filling up them planes, all them planes that's going for Europe every day to the African continent. Every day. Full of white folks. Full of white folks. <laughs> the same yeah. white folks I talk about. Exactly. And yeah, But you ain't going over there. So again, Brother Bomani, thank you. I'm doing you. Right. And it'd be, like I said, you know, white people uh, in uh, Birkenstock sandals and motherfucking... Um, Dried April crotch, eating them and shit and stuff like that. So, brothers, thank you for coming over. Um, thank you, Dr. Moon, for being here. Thank you, Cambridge. Thank you, all the moderators. And uh, I will see y'all. I got another show because I'm going to be busy tomorrow. I got something coming through here. <laughs> so I can't tell y'all what I got coming through, but I, you know how I get down. Um, we got another show with Ron Wills called The White Man Got His Foot on My Neck on my other channel. That's going to be a classic because he's going to be talking about you niggas too. So he got something for y'all. Um, it, at five o'clock Asian Standard Time. So, any last thing, brother Bowman? Absolutely, brother. Um, uh, thank you for your time and energy and family. Uh, visit our website, Africa for the Africans and check out all of our details. And uh, reach out to me, and we'll connect. I'm uh, always available, waiting for your call. And any questions any one of us have, even if you're not coming on a tour, I'm available for my brothers and sisters. Uh, do you know somebody named w- Wendy Morris? Oh, yes, Wendy Morris, that is my sister. That is my sister, true warrior sister. She is incredible. She went to Ghana with us, and then now she's already in Ghana again. Yeah. So oh, she, wow. She, what she's doing, and that's what, I tell, that's what she's doing. She is in the country, building her experience, building her connections, and doing the things she needs to do to get things going for herself. She's not sitting back and, 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 and trying to organize for the next 50 years. A bunch of different things, you know. She's just there and connecting. So when once people connect with me, I you know I usually just do my best to connect them to things and let them know that you know do your thing. We got your back. So so rock on, my sister. Keep it strong and um, definitely looking forward to connecting back with you. And um, you know we keep it strong and family. Until next time. Till next time, guys. See you at five o'clock. Thank you, everybody, and uh, peace out.